Okay, in this video here, we're going to talk about streets in the building code. Um, so in earlier videos, I said when you're approaching a building, you first have to figure out, okay, what are my occupancies? Then you need to figure out your building area and your building height. And the fourth thing you want to do is figure out how many streets your building's facing. And with all that information, then you're able to move on to another part of the code that starts to um, identify um, the construction requirements of your building, basically. You know, so whether um, it's going to be non-combustible construction, whether it's going to be sprinklered, um, whether um, or what your floor fire separation ratings are going to be on your floors and things like this, basically. So you need these these four pieces of information to, in most cases, to um, to determine these requirements, basically. So the last one here out of the four is the streets. So we'll just jump down to section 32210 and just take a look at streets right here. Um, without getting into too much detail here, basically what this article is telling you is that every building has to face um, a street. And if you go to the definition of street, it probably is what you think it is. Okay, so it's pretty much, um, you know, a city street. You do have to watch the width, though, nine meters wide as far as the street's concerned. Now, many lanes and many um, internal roads and sites aren't nine meters wide. Um, so it's important to make note of number two here where it says for the purposes of um, determining how many streets your building is facing um, for figuring out the construction requirements. So for this section, an access route is permitted to be considered a street. So then we have to look at what are the requirements of access routes. So we'll go there in a second. Um, and then it just goes on to say, okay, if, if your building is um, it's considered to face one street where not less than 25% of the building perimeter is located within 15 meters of a street or streets, so the 15 meters is important, um, your building is considered to face two streets, provided not less than 50% of the building perimeter is located within 15 meters of the street or streets. So it could be that 50% of your building face is in, is in with, within 15 meters of a street, but for the purposes of using um, the 322 section where we'll determine the, the safety requirements on the building, it might be able to face two streets basically. And then with three streets, you need 75% of the building face uh, within 15 meters. So now we'll just jump ahead to the, what is this access route design basically. Um, so 3254 will pretty much tell you that um, you know, a, a building in part three, essentially. So one that's over three stories in building height and more than 600 meters squared um, in building area shall be provided with access routes for fire department vehicles to the building face having a principal entry. So that's an important thing to consider right there. So, you know, most buildings have a principal entry and basically you have to identify that entry as the principal entry for fire department purposes. And that's essentially where the truck's gonna head when there's a fire. There are cases where you have, say, a mall or something like that, where there's multiple, um, you know, principal entries, I suppose. But you would only identify one of them as the principal entry for the purposes of the fire department, and then the fire department would review that. Okay, that's the that's the entry um, that we're going to go to if there's a if there's an alarm, basically. So there's always an entry that's um, identified as the the go-to point for the fire department, basically. It's sometimes not even um, the obvious principal entry. Um, I, I've worked on some big box um, strip mall type buildings where you know every tenant um, essentially had a principal entry on this building. So then maybe there's eight of them across the length of this building, for each for a different um, you know major tenant basically. So in that case, the the local the fire department had just said, hey, put a room on the back side of this building and call that the principal entry. And so they knew that when, you know, if there was a, an alarm off going off there, they would go to that back side of the building, which we had an access route to, to re, you know, to be, have the initial response to the fire basically. And that was just at the request of the, of the fire department in that case. Now, what are they doing when they go to that principal entry? Well, they're trying to find out, you know, in a larger building, where exactly um, is the problem, basically? Where, where's the fire? So often when you go into the, uh, you know, an entry of a building, you'll see a box on the wall that looks like that. So it's called an annunciator panel. Uh, and that's pretty much going to tell the 
the fire department when they enter the building it's going to tell them where to go basically so there's sensors or something throughout the building like you know if you ever hear it beeping like maybe actually that one there's got a red light but it might be beeping and saying smoke alarm has gone off in in stairwell four or something like that so um, basically it's just going to guide the fire department um, to where to go in the building for these larger buildings and that's why they want to that's why they want to go there first basically so they're not running around the building looking for something uh, here's here's an example of one that's freestanding so this was a, a vestibule that was all glass so there was no wall to put it in so it's in its own pedestal okay so that's the principal entry and then um, this next part is location of access routes and this is essentially telling you that um, the truck's got to be able to get close to the principal entry basically so um, the between 3 and 15 meters from the principal entry so that 15 meters again is an important number so even even if you had an internal roadway in a site you can't have that entry uh, too far away from that that roadway the, the fire truck needs to get to within 15 meters of it uh, sentence two gets into um, you know where access routes have to be provided and more specific um, um, distances I guess so you know for a building provided with a fire department connection a fire department pumper vehicle can be can be located adjacent to the hydrants referred to in here so a fire department connection uh, looks like let's see if I have a picture of one here is basically a Siamese connection so often you'll see these types of things on the outsides of buildings um, there's one right there that's freestanding okay that's a Siamese connection that's connected to a standpipe system so that essentially what that sentence is telling you is or somewhere in that article anyways it's telling you that these Siamese connections can't be closer than three meters from the principal entry but they can't be farther than 15 meters so you'll always find them close to the principal entry and then what happens there is um, they can attach their hoses to it and pump water into this pipe system and then what you'll find in usually a stairwell is um, the standpipe system that looks like this and it's got a hose connection on there so the fire department can run up to the floor that's got the fire and connect their their hose to this and um, go fight the fire basically so that's what that's all about and so there's another article um, in the code that determines whether you need a standpipe system and um, and 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 the Siamese connection basically and, and anyways these these articles just talk about certain distances things can be like a fire hydrant can't be a certain distance from um, from the building if you don't have one of these fire department connections and so on and so forth so 90 meters is important if you don't have a, a fire department connection then 90 meters is important and so on and so forth so that one's uh, important to look through when you're planning out your site plans basically for your building now we'll just move ahead to the access route design itself so basically um, again um, you're allowed to consider um, an access route that's designed to these parameters can be considered a street for the purposes of figuring out your your building um, safety construction requirements and so some of the big ones here is that you need to have at least a six meter wide um path basically and and the and the big thing to plan for is just turning of this larger truck so um, you have a six meter wide path but you have to have a center line radius not less than 12 meters so you can draw a radius on any corner um, of 12 meters and then offset that that radius three meters one way and three meters the other way and then you'll have the sweep of the truck of whether it can make that turn and so here's an example of just that um, so this is a, a fire truck access plan basically and you'll see um, there's that six meter width and there's that 12 meter radius and so the outside radius is 15 and inside is 9 and you're just ensuring that that truck can one get to the principal entry and then get out of there and in this case here there was no um, there was no fire department connection so there was no Siamese connection so if you read through that um, previous article it would tell you that the um, fire hydrant can't be more than 90 meters away 
Um, so there's the existing hydrant, and here's a line, this dashed line going along that path right to the principal entry, and that line would have to be less than 90 meters or else um, a new fire hydrant would have to be put in, basically. And so that's kind of the idea of an access route design. And typically you gotta show that on the site plan. You gotta prove that um, that you're meeting these requirements by by either using a, um, a truck turning program or you know just, just doing what you just saw in that example there and indicating that um, the truck can get around obstacles basically. There is um, a possibility of a, of a truck coming into a site and having a dead end and it could back out but it can't be more than 90 meters long so if, if it's driving into your site to get to that principal entry and the path is more than 90 meters from the street then you'd have to um, at that point um, provide a turnaround for it of some sort. So another another way to get out without them backing out basically. So that's kind of important as well. And, and that's really it for streets. So, you know, um, high level is basically, um, you know, you have to determine how many streets your building's facing based on some parameters. And you can also um, consider access routes as streets for the purposes of article of section 322 where we'll figure out our construction requirements and that's kind of the four um the four key elements you need to move on to um, classifying your building and finding the construction requirements